Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Kindly remain standing for the entrance of the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis. Please remain standing for the Grand Bahama Police District Pop Band as they play the National Anthem of the United States of America, followed by the National Anthem of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. <laughs> The Honorable Philip Brave Davis, KC, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and Minister of Finance. The Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, Minister of Health and Wellness of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Honorable Ginger M. Moxie, MP, Minister for Grand Bahama. Chairman and members of the Board of Directors of the Grand Bahama Port Authority and Affiliates. Permanent Secretary, Melvin Seymour. Senior government officials, heads of department, heads of community and youth organizations, a pleasant good morning and welcome. I'm Sean Powers, Director of Admissions for Western Atlantic University School of Medicine, and I am honored to be your host this morning for at the third White Coat Ceremony. Protocol having been established, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Laura Welke, Campus Dean. Applause 
Dr. Paula Wales, Executive Dean and Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Joseph Flaherty, President and Chief Medical Officer. Dr. Marcus Bethel, Distinguished Physician Speaker and Member of the Western Atlantic University Board of Trustees. Mr. Peter Goetz, Wassum's Chief Executive Officer and Member of the Wassum Board of Trustees. Mr. Bill Colgan, Chairman of Wassum's Board of Trustees. Faculty, colleagues, students, families, and friends, including someone I've known for more than 15 years, Dr. Thomas Shepard, member of the Western Atlantic University Board of Trustees. Now, born and raised in Grand Bahama, Minister Ginger Moxie is passionate about providing opportunities to empower Bahamians by creating synergistic relationships throughout the Bahamas and the world with a focus on cultural, business, tourism, educational, youth, and humanitarian exchanges. Please welcome the Minister for Grand Bahama, Ginger Moxie. The Honorable Philip Ray Davis Casey, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and Minister of Finance. The Honorable Michael Davo, Minister of Health and Wellness, Executive for Western Atlantic University School of Medicine. Other distinguished and invited guests, fa faculty, family, friends, and future physicians. Good morning. It is truly an honor to welcome you to this morning's white coat ceremony. Two years ago, perhaps more clearly than ever before, we saw the importance of our healthcare providers following the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was their service and dedication that we leaned on to help heal, cure, treat, and save lives. The students being coded today have chosen the same noble path. Wassum plays a welcomed role in assisting with the resurgence of the local economy, but also the advancement of Grand Bahama's health and educational infrastructure, key mandates of my ministry. This occasion is an, an iconic rite of passage within the medical community. Today, 39 individuals who represent this university's third cohort of students continue their journey in the noble medical profession. You are to be commended. As the Minister for Grand Bahama, I must admit that I am especially delighted that this wonderful group has chosen Wassum on Grand Bahama Island as the launch point for such a meaningful journey. Whether the driving force behind choosing Wassum was passion and selflessness, or whether it was the fact that its world-class programs are offered in a location where you are surrounded by beautiful beaches, a city with amenities, and a rich culture, we are pleased to have you here on Grand Bahama. The white coat ceremony is a ceremony of symbols. Today symbolizes the start of a new educational era, one which will allow you to advance your knowledge forge new skills, and guide you into the front lines of the healthcare profession. The white coat and the instruments that will be given today symbolize the commitment, compassion, excellence, professionalism, and the integrity required for the noteworthy journey that you now immerse yourselves in. And the gathering today of those who will instruct, challenge, and support you symbolize the fact that humanity, collaboration, and meaningful connections are essential for your success. To the faculty and staff of this great university, I congratulate you on the impact that you have made thus far. To those supporting the future physicians, I commend you for your invaluable contribution and partnership. And to those being draped today, I applaud your drive and encourage you to maintain your devotion to service and your commitment to building better communities 
through the medical field. Once again, students, faculty, families, and friends, welcome to the third of many Western Atlantic School of Medicine white coat ceremonies. Thank you for playing a pivotal role in making Grand Bahama grand again. Thank you. Serving as Executive Dean and Chief Academic Officer of Wasson, Dr. Paula Wales, a Harvard Macy Scholar with more than 25 years of experience in U.S. and international medical education. She is among the foremost experts in both accreditation standards and curriculum oversight in North America. Dr. Wales. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Protocol having been established, I'd like to greet everyone with a hearty good morning. Good morning. That sounded great. This is going to be an awesome audience. Um, as Sean said, my name is Paula Wales, and um, I have been to several white coat ceremonies. I am thrilled to be spending this time with you today. It is a very special ceremony. We have outgrown campus. There are so many people here. So it's exciting, and uh, I hope you share in the excitement. So in addition to uh, welcoming and thanking the Prime Minister for being here and our government officials, I would also like to welcome our special guests. Um, I would also like to welcome our dedicated faculty and staff, our fearless leaders, and I would like to ask all of you to join me in giving another round of applause for our September 2022 entering class. <laughs> Students, as you know, I mean, one week in, uh, medical school is tough. But I want you to know that you are surrounded by a support system of faculty, staff, and loved ones who will help get you through this challenging and exciting time in your life. Our forward-thinking medical school would not exist without our innovative curriculum and those who developed it. Would the members of our distinguished faculty please stand and be recognized? Our medical students would not be here today without the unwavering support of their loved ones. I'm sure all of you have had ups and downs on your unique paths to get into medical school. And I know you are all a source of pride for your family members and your loved ones. I'd like our students' special guests to stand and please join me. Everybody stand up. Right. Please join me in giving a round of applause for our students' special guests. And as Chief, Medic or Chief Academic Officer at Western Atlantic University School of Medicine, I would be remiss if I left the stage today without doing a quick lesson, taking a quiz, and giving you a homework assignment. All right, everyone ready? So here's the lesson. One of the first things our charter class did was develop a WASM hand signal, right? So this is the WASM hand signal. And you do it by, you can make an L and an inverse L, right? Bring it together to turn it into a W for Wassum, right? No extra fingers, just a crisp W, okay? Got it? Everybody got the lesson? All right, so here's the quiz. I'm going to, to count to three and say Wassum, all right? And when I do, I want each of you to flash the Wassum sign, right? Now, this is a mastery quiz. So what that means is everyone has to be successful at this or we don't move on, right? <laughs> I have confidence and faith in you that you will be able to do this, okay? So, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, Wassum! Look at that! I think we have 100% mastery. Great job! You all pass with flying colors. All right, so we did the lesson and we did the quiz. Now here's the homework assignment, and this is really fun. For the rest of the day, just today, but for the rest of the day, every time you hear Wassum, 
right? You should flash the Wassum sign, right? This should be a lot of fun because I have no idea how many times people are going to say Wassum, so we're going to be doing this all morning, right? Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about Wassums entering September 2022 class. 54% of them are male and 46% are female, so it's kind of even. Students range in age from 22 to north of 40. You can all thank me later. Um, with a median age of 28. 12 of our students have graduate degrees and 17 hail from groups considered underrepresented in medicine. 34 of our 39 have undergraduate degrees in biology or biological sciences including one student who holds a degree in aerospace physiology, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, everyone goes, ooh, who's that? You'll find out later. Uh, members of the class come from three different countries, the United States, Canada, and the Bahamas. In fact, we are very proud to have Wassums very first Bahamian applicant in this class. Okay. So now is when it might start to feel a little competitive. So if you feel compelled to, to cheer for any group that resonates with you, you are invited to do so. Ready? Here we go. In terms of U.S. states, the September 2022 entering class comes from 15 different U.S. states. The state sending the most students to the September 22 Wassum entering class is, we have a drum roll. You wanna guess? Texas, that's right. All right. The state sending the second most students to the class is? Montana. I hear a Montana, who else? Florida. And rounding out the top three, the state sending the third most students to the class is? The drum rolls died. You, you, come on. This is an interactive process. Okay. All right, the third most is Maryland. Right? Yeah. Right. And interestingly, those are the top three states for the entire Wassum cohort, not just the September class, which is interesting. Now, the, the next most well, it's not a state, but the next most number of students comes from the Bahamas. Yeah. So we're pretty excited about that. There is a two-way tie between the undergraduate universities sending the most graduates to this class, and the two-way tie is between Baylor and St. Leo University. Okay. There is a 37-way tie between the undergraduate universities sending the second most graduates to the class. I'm not going to list them all, uh, but what this means is if you didn't go to St. Leo or Baylor, clap down. Right. Good. All right, several members of the class have family members who are physicians, which is exciting. No, no love for the physicians. And students in this class have spent time in several countries, including the, the Commonwealth of Bahamas, Canada, Colombia, Dominica, Haiti, Iran, Jamaica, Nicaragua, Pakistan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. So this is my favorite part because we get to talk about the interesting aspects of our students. So members of this class come to us with a variety of professional experiences. We have a zip line guide. No one wants to self-identify, but a zip line guide. We have a chemist who participated in environmental sampling. We have a video game designer. How cool is that? They're all looking at each other going, is that you? Is this um, we have students who've been Uber and Lyft drivers, in case you need help getting around the island. We have one student who put himself through undergrad by working at Domino's and Home Depot. We have a boat rental entrepreneur. We have sale, a, sale, a cell phone sales associate. 
we even have a commissioned artist. And the commissioned artist, we need to connect you with, with Mrs. Bethel before you leave. <laughs> We have graphic designers who are interested in photo restoration, and we even have a movie theater manager in our crew. We also have a student who worked for NASA um, as part of a STEM youth outreach program, which I thought was kind of cool. And over half of the students worked as healthcare providers or healthcare professionals before coming to medical school. So we have nurses and scribes and clinical scientists, lab techs, phlebotomists, and even a theological ecology lab tech, which I thought that was kind of cool. I had to look up theological ecology. I didn't know what it was. So you all Google that later on, right? And this class is an athletic bunch. We have a variety of athletes, including American football players. We have basketball players. We have boxers. We have cheerleaders and gymnasts. We have golfers and hockey players. We have martial artists, lacrosse players, pickleball players, scuba divers, softball players, track and field eventers. We even have a water polo captain on the group, in the crew, and weightlifters. And for those of you who, are, who don't participate in sports, don't worry because we also have a couple personal trainers who can help you along. <laughs> Our September Wassum students have a variety of interests, including coin collecting. Who's our coin collector? Huh? They're not going to say. Woodworking. We have several students who enjoy fishing, but they're not sharing that now. Okay. We have musicians, and we have several members of the class who've volunteered or done service learning projects. Uh, we've, we have mission workers. We have first responder volunteers, church volunteers. We have a scout leader. Who is a scout leader? Yeah, OK, thank you. And we had a couple of students who were mentors for youth, youth mentors, right? Our faculty will be impressed to know that we have multiple scholars in the group, including um, a research assistant for an integrative vision lab, we have another student who did research on chemotherapeutic agents fighting cancer. And we have a student who's published research on mosquito surveillance, which I thought that was interesting. We have a nurse preceptor who was involved in clinical trials at Johns Hopkins University. And we have at least three graduate teaching assistants in this group, including one in human anatomy. That person needs to clap now because all the students want to know who tutored human anatomy. And we have a few U.S. veterans in the class, and we thank you for your service. We welcome each of you, and we celebrate your diversity. We're glad you're here, and we think the future of medicine and the future of Wassum looks very bright indeed. Thank you. I would now like to introduce the Honorable Dr. Darville, Minister of Health and Wellness for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Dr. Darville served as a medical doctor for the Bahamas government in the Ministry of Health and as a member of the Bahamas Medical Council. In 2021, Dr. Darville was elected to the House of Assembly as the Member of Parliament for the Tall Pines constituency, and he was appointed to the post of, Prime, of, of Minister of Health and Wellness. Since his appointment, Dr. Darville has spearheaded the transformation process for clinics across the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the hiring of additional clinicians, and the implementation process for catastrophic care and advocated for major legislative changes in the realm of mental health. Please welcome Dr. Darville. Thank you so much. I'm going to make a couple of adjustments, if it's OK. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it's in the wrong location. Thank you so much. Who's the aerospace engineer? Yes, uh, well. 
I think it's an excellent combination. <laughs> because I am an engineer, uh, and uh, the two will work together very well. Trust me when I tell you that. Standing on the established protocol, I must acknowledge our platform guests, the Right Honorable Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis, our faculty, my colleague minister, students, family, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Still trying to get up. Last night was a difficult one for me, but uh, the beginning of this month makes three years since Hurricane Dorian impacted our nation and forever changed the lives of the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, but mainly persons living in Abaco and Grand Bahama. The restoration is ongoing. The rebuilding is ongoing, the recovery is ongoing, and the healing is ongoing. There's a saying that when it rains, it pours. And for the people of Grand Bahama and Abaco, the addition of the impact of COVID-19 pandemic only months after Dorian was certainly a downpour for all of us. However, the saying goes on to exclaim, but soon the sun will shine again. Grand Bahama, may your light shine brightly once more as you find hope beyond Hurricane Dorian and beyond COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, as Minister of Health and Wellness, I am honored to participate in this third White Coast ceremony for the Western Atlantic University School of Medicine here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Today's occasion is a bright ray, and it plays a part in helping the return of the light to Grand Bahama, and it signifies that notwithstanding challenges, opportunity, advancement, and hope always prevail. Students, Today you represent that bright hope for tomorrow. Please join me in giving them another round of For 30 years, the White Coat Ceremony has become a milestone marker in the life of student doctors. The ceremony symbolizes the transition in the mindset from a student to the mindset of a physician whose sole aim is to use the gifts and talents in medicine as an avenue to help in the care of people. For some, like you here today, the ceremony comes at the onset of the medical school journey, and for others, it comes at the end of the commencement exercise. When you don your coat in year one or in year four, the result of adornment are the same. You are denoting to your family, to our communities, and to yourself that you have made a choice. And the choice is to maintain, promote the health and well-being of people under your care who you will be privileged to serve. Throughout your journey, your knowledge will expand. And the way you think and relate to others will expand as well as you use your abilities to solve complex medical problems that transform the lives of the patient and it will transform you as well. Students, remember that not only will patients look at your name on your lab coat, but they will be expecting more of you. They expect compassionate care. They expect hope in the midst of some of the most difficult circumstances, and they expect medical professionalism. By choosing a career in medicine, you have chosen to accept the responsibility of caring for others, imparting sound, 
clinical advice and providing guidance and maintaining confidentiality and respect for those who you care for. This represents the future of medicine and we are all excited about the valuable contributions that you will make as physicians here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and wherever you may go throughout the world. Learning, working, and living during a global pandemic will continue to present challenges for all of us who practice medicine throughout the world. I encourage you to stay the course, stay the course, and draw on the sage words of the former South African president, Dr. Nelson Mandela, who said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, as we battle against COVID-19 and other health threats that affect the Bahamas and the world, we continue to prepare for the progression of our healthcare system here in our nation. Last month, my technical team and I had the opportunity to visit and assess infrastructural upgrades in clinics and tertiary healthcare facilities throughout our archipelago. Grand Bahama was no exception. With the upgrades on the way for our West End Clinic, Eight Mile Rock Clinic, Sweetens Cake Clinic, Hawksville Clinic, and the Rand Memorial Hospital, let me assure you here and the residents who would hear my presentation that these essential repairs will be conducted safely without the disruption of essential medical services here on the island. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited about where we are going in healthcare and healthcare reform in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and plans for the construction of a new state-of-the-art hospital next door to your campus is near completion. More will be said about this new hospital for Grand Bahama in the near future. But the excitement is mounting. As we move towards groundbreaking ceremonies for this long-awaited hospital, students, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to speak directly to the leadership of the medical school, its faculty and staff, of this wonderful institution, the West Atlantic University School of Medicine. I wish to express sincere gratitude for your commitment to the training, teaching, and advancement of medicine. But in addition to that, your investment into our economy, the livelihood of our residents here on the island of Grand Bahama. Even after the devastation of Hurricane Dorian and the tailgating done by COVID-19 pandemic, not only did you open the doors of the campus in January of this year, but it is now the third installation of white coats here on the island of Grand Bahama. I am excited. The founder, Peter Getz, President and Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Joe Flaherty, your vision and dedication to improving on the lives of physicians and the future of their practice of medicine here in our country and abroad is commendable. The government of the Bahamas look forward to our commitment and partnership and to develop opportunities to grow the school as well as our community. Through the scholarship program, we have already seen one Bahamian, Ms. Elisa, Stubbs participated in the white coat ceremony held in May of this year, and I'm proud to say today, Prime Minister, three more Bahamian School is part of that program, and things are moving. To all the students, we are very proud of what you have accomplished so far. You are family. You've come from many different countries, but your connection to this medical program will create ambassadors from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas 
as clearly defined in your degree, your MD degree, from this university in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I know for yourself that the journey requires discipline, focus, hard work, and support from others. I take this opportunity to congratulate your families. Your mentors provide you with the love, the financial support, and the encouragement you need to accomplish this goal. I applaud them for their steadfastness in your journey. I can still remember my mother, who is now gone, as she witnessed my white coat ceremony during the commencement exercise many years ago. So students, remember your family. They will always be in your corner rooting for you. Continue to make them proud. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce a man who is not a physician, but have a heart of compassion. He is someone who has contributed tremendously to the growth and development of our country. I serve at his pleasure and I'm proud to be mentored by him as I carry out my duty as the Minister of Health and Wellness. He has a future for this country and have the ability to solve complex issues that affect small island states. He's a leader globally when it comes to climate change, a phenomenon that affects the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And he is committed to the transformation of healthcare services throughout our archipelago. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the Prime Minister come to give his remarks. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I hope that this will remain here, so when I say blossom. <laughs> I, while I stand on the fully on the adopted established protocol. I recognize the Dean, Dr. Paula Wales, uh, the Chief Academic Officer of Western Atlantic School of Medicine, What's up? <laughs> also the faculty and staff of this professional school, uh, my parliamentary colleagues who sit on the platform with me, Dr. Marcus Benton, who is also present with us, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In marketing this school, this medical school, the following was said about this campus in explaining why candidates desiring a career in medicine should choose Wasson for their pre clerkship, clerkship training. And this is what was said. You will prepare for medical residency on the newest, most contemporary campus in international medical education, just 80 miles from Florida, the location of Wasson School, state-of-the-art pre clerkship campus, was specifically chosen to allow easy access to and from the United States and Canada. The governor of the Bahamas has marketed the Bahamas as ideally located for foreign direct investment, tourism, and travel. I make that point because we are keenly aware that Western Atlantic University here in Freeport, Grand Bahama, offers education and medical tourism important components of our tourism product which is our principal business and industry. After your time here, students, candidates, I hope that you will all want to recommend this unique Bahamian edu, edu tourism experience to all of your families, friends, and colleagues. Now that I've made my tourism pitch, <laughs> I turn my attention to the task at hand. 
Again, I thank Dr. Will for her kind invitation to address you today in celebration of this important milestone in your lives. Many parents are happy to celebrate this day with you, as many of them are projecting themselves through you. I know that experience firsthand. My father wanted me to be a physician. He was adamant about it. My mother, on the other hand, supported my chosen profession, which was banking and later law. Of course, my ultimate career choice was to engage in the brave world of politics. <laughs> I am fortunate and proud. I'm a fortunate and proud parent of both a doctor and a lawyer. But since none of my children are to date brave enough to enter the world of politics, <laughs> one may argue that I am still projecting. <laughs> I commend WASM for its commitment to diversity in education and its confidence in our national economy. Notwithstanding the recent challenges in Grand Bahama, the Dorian, and the pandemic, I'm confident that your best days are ahead of you. And with the government as your partner, there are many number of public-private partnership opportunities that we can exploit as we work together to build the economy of Grand Bahama, the Wasson Global Brand, the education community, and an unmatched legacy of excellence in medical education. My government, as you have heard, is already investing in two new state-of-the-art hospitals in Grand Bahama and New Providence, completing several polyclinics and many hospitals in our family islands, and upgrading many existing health clinics. This is a major step toward forward in upgrading the infrastructure of our healthcare delivery system. We have also expanded our telemedicine capacity and expanded the provision of specialist family medical doctors so, so that we are well on track to ensure that every government clinic has one, including those in the family islands. And we are also continuing to move towards the provision of universal health care coverage. This is foundational to the way Bahamians can access healthcare services. All of these big initiatives hold opportunity for you once you complete your studies. In the meantime, I urge you to embody, the, the embody and project the vision and core values of this institution of higher learning and professional training. And then use your acquired knowledge to earn residency positions and become outstanding patient-centered medical doctors serving the public. Excellence, commitment, diversity, integrity, respect, and cooperation should be the watchwords and hallmark of your residency and resulting professional career. Commit to ultimately delivering excellent healthcare services. Commit yourselves to both the local and global communities which you serve. Wear your integrity as badges of honor as you embrace the highest standard of professional conduct, ethical behavior, and moral character. As ambassadors of this institution, demonstrate respect for and deference toward all individuals, whether or not they are affiliated with your student body, WASM students, staff, faculty, partners, communities, patients, and families. Just demonstrate respect and deference to them all. It will serve you well if you cultivate a spirit and culture of cooperation in your interpersonal communications and professional collaborations. Embracing these core values in your professional and personal lives will go a long way in boosting public trust in the practice of medical science.
And we live at a time when there's a culture of cynicism and mistrust of endemic proportions in all spheres of national life, including the medical profession. As a political and government leader, I'm keenly aware of the global distrust of the political process and of governance, driven to a large extent by a brazen disinformation transmitted across all social media platforms. We need not look further than the rancor and high levels of disinformation transmitted across many social media platforms surrounding the COVID-19 vaccination protocol, its chemical composition, its impact on the body, and its role out in many countries. This despite the fact for many decades in this country and countries around the world, vaccines for polio, mumps, measles, and so many of the viruses which killed numbers of children and young people in the past have been preserved by the taking of vaccine. These immunizations are part of a worldwide effort to wipe out the scourges that have afflicted generations. And yet, the immunization against the COVID-19 virus, one of the greatest collaborative efforts of our time, is undermined by misinformation and disinformation transmitted via social media. You can play a critical role in helping to restore trust, to hold evidence and reason, and to allow for calmer heads to prevail. I urge you, each of you, to fight back with integrity, ethics, transparency, respect, and honesty. It is our best weapon in the fight to restore trust. And you should start now, at the beginning of your studies, as a, at the start of your career. In so many ways, the whole world is in need of healing. By your oath and the symbolism of the white coat which characterizes members of the medical profession, I pray that you bring your best selves to play your part in this global humanita humanitarian effort, and I wish you well, I wish you well, as you go forward on this journey at Wasson. To come and enjoy the and respectful experience for each and every one of you. Thank you. Dr. Marcus Bethel is the consultant internist and administrator at Lucayan Medical Center here in Freeport. He's a member of the Medical Association of the Bahamas and American College of Physicians. Dr. Bethel is a member of the WASM Board of Trustees and has held numerous civic and leadership positions. To help welcome our WASM students to the profession of medicine, please welcome Dr. Marcus Bethel. Good morning to all. I think I need like Dr. Darwin to take this off. Let me begin by first of all welcoming to Grand Bahama our distinguished Prime Minister, Right Honorable Phil Davis. Again. And a good morning to our ministers, Darwin and Moxie. I also want to take this opportunity to say how happy we are to have the trustees of the Wasson School of Medicine. Uh, in particular, we have with us 
two distinguished founding members, the men who really made this whole effort possible. And I want them to stand, and I want you to give them a round of applause. First of all, Dr. Mr. Peter Yes, and Mr. Derek Holman. Without those two gentlemen, nothing would have happened. Thank you very much. I also uh, wish to recognize, of course, the faculty of Wasson, the administrative staff of Wasson, and the students of Wasson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. We're happy to have you here in Freeport, and I welcome you as the former Minister of Health who had responsibility for looking after some aspects of Freeport and Grand Bahama years ago. Let me take this opportunity uh, then to say how happy I am to be here with you and also to serve as a member of the Board of Trustees or Board of Directors of Wassum. We've come a long way and I am most impressed knowing that we have an additional 40 students uh, who are going to receive their white coats this uh, morning. And, and I understand that that brings to a total of 70 students at the University of Washington. And so it is that I recall my own period when I entered medical school and received my white coat. That was some 54 years ago. I did say 54 years ago. <laughs> and since that time, I have uh, served, following formal graduation abroad, served most of those years here in the Bahamas, my home. And uh, it is indeed a very singular moment for me to be a part of this innovative approach to medical school training, whereby the students are taught via a mechanism called case-oriented uh, training, case-oriented problem-solving associated with simulation technologies. And if ever you have the opportunity and you should try to find your way to the medical school, you will be blown away by the, not only the, the physical premises, but the technologies that are involved in training medical students of the future. And so this paradigm shift is one that I have been uh, very excited and interested in. And I'm sure that the Minister of Health here uh, will be able to review aspects of that as we move forward with our own training of medical doctors in the Bahamas. But nonetheless, welcome to all. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here. And I want to say that 54 years ago, yes, I did enter medical school at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. And I was indeed awestruck and highly excited to walk the halls of famous medical men of the, of, the era's past, of the era past, including names such as Sir William Osler, in addition to Sir Wilder Penfield, who was a renowned international neurologist, neurosurgeon, and of course, Hans Selye. These were some of the individuals who walked the halls of uh, McGill University many, many years ago. My medical career has incorporated the ideals and passion of these former iconic medical luminaries who gave much to the medical health care system of their day and, of course, contributed mightily to the care and treatment of patients in their care in years gone by. My own passion was to return home 
to serve the people of the Bahamas, my home. Following my formal training beyond McGill University into Toronto General Hospital and the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. But it was a pleasure for me to return to my home because there was much work to be done in bringing our healthcare system along into the modern era of uh, medical care delivery and technology. And today I stand before you following 50 years of service as a internist in the Bahamas, 10 years as a senator in the Parliament of the Bahamas, and five years as Minister of Health and the Environment here in the Bahamas. And it is through my faith in God, a first-class medical education, and strong family support that I have persevered over these many years. Dear students, your success as physicians depends on having similar support systems to carry you through the rigors and stresses of healthcare delivery because the challenges are numerous and never-ending. Additionally, success in medical school is not guaranteed to all. Some will decide that healthcare delivery is not for them, while others will soldier on to graduation. To those who graduate as medical doctors in the years to come, I now draw your attention to the following medical guiding principles. Number one, the Hippocratic Oath, which serves as a guiding light in the practice of medicine, and in particular, the ethics involved in practicing the art and science of medicine. It is a must read and a must digest for all medical personnel medical students, doctors of the future. Secondly, I want you all to remember the Latin dictum, primum non nocere, which means first do no harm. And this is important because you must remember that you're not God and you must engage wisdom, not egotism. I also want to bring to your attention what I call the four A's of being a respected and successful physician. A, ability, which is gained through quality medical education. Second A is affability, which refers to good communication and compassion. One must be able to speak listen, understand, and communicate effectively with your patients, no matter their background, racial, cultural, economic, because in order to help, you must understand. Third A, availability. Do not neglect or hide from your patients. There are some doctors I know who spend half their life on the golf course. And there are those who must pull the weight by being available to pick up the slack. Do always act responsibly and be available for those that you've brought under your care. Finally, affordability. I pay, bring your attention to the Rotary International motto, which says, service above self, he profits most who serves the best. And that applies to all aspects of life, all aspects of professional uh, careers, and of course, it serves you well to understand that your responsibilities are to provide quality service before your own concerns about profitability. Those who adhere to and fully digest the principles that, are, that I've outlined will understand more as they continue along the journey into medical care 
and medical delivery of services to all that you come across, all individuals you come across. And so as you don your white co coats today, please remember quality service above self should be your motto going forward in your career. I thank you all very much. Western Atlantic University School of Medicine has gifted white coats, stethoscopes, and diagnostic kits to welcome you to medical school and to remind you of the responsibilities of the profession you have chosen for your life's work. In addition, each of you have a gold lapel pin engraved with a heart on your white coat. The pins are a gift from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, a public foundation dedicated to fostering humanism in medicine. I would like to welcome Ms. Jennifer Dennis, Senior Associate Dean for Student Operations and Finance at Wassum, to the stage to call our faculty and students for the donning of the white coats. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Dr. Mark Coleman. <laughs> Dr. Mark Coleman will now don Michael Alexander McLean. Bridget Leverton. Dr. Takaya DeVoe. Dr. DeVoe will now don Maya DeJesus. Robin Wilson. Dr. Alyssa Eason. Dr. Eason will now don Ashley M. English. <laughs> 
Lisseth Keanu. Dr. Elchi will now don Batul Unar Sayud. Dr. Palivi Haldankar. Dr. Haldankar will now don Pierre T. Wells. Nielsen. Dr. Eric Nielsen will now don Spencer and Stoll. Richard Nebo. Katrina Parker will now don Matthew Gallant.
Derek Severson. Nicole Reeves. Dr. Nicole Reeves will now don Nicholas Guevara. James Galpin. Dr. Jaretta Roberts Carey. Dr. Jaretta Roberts Carey will now don Tyler Lamborn. Kenton Marinard. Dr. Nancy Selfridge. Dr. Selfridge will now don James Turdeman.
Nikhil Kasapali. Dr. Reg Vendrate. <laughs> Dr. Tay will now don Alvaro Alvarez. Matthew Manfredo. Robert Phillips. <laughs> Dr. Josh Webb. Dr. Webb will now don Megan Almagir. Richard Heron. Jean St. Val. And Arena Devani. Dr. Joseph Flaherty, President and Chief Medical Officer of Western Atlantic University School of Medicine, one of the most respected academic leaders in the United States, Dr. Flaherty, a James Scholar, has more than 40 years of experience in the sector, including being Executive Dean at the University of Illinois College of Medicine, the largest medical school in the U.S. Dr. Flaherty. <laughs> Thank you.
It's uh, my honor to uh, administer the Physician's Pledge, the Hippocratic Oath. So will the students please stand up and repeat after me, and any physicians in the audience that would like to join us can also stand up. I'll go one line at a time. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and the dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit consideration of age, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will res respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble pr traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, my colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide the care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Thank you. You may sit down. Thank you, Dr. Flaherty. This concludes our third Wassum White Coat Ceremony. We would like to thank the Grand Bahama Police District Pop Band. For their musical accompaniment. Thank you also to Mr. James Drucker, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer and his team who live streamed and photographed today's ceremony. I'd like to applaud the Office of Student Affairs and Wassum colleagues who assisted with the production of the ceremony. And finally, thank you to the Grand Lucayan team that helped to make today's ceremony possible. Now, please remain seated while official photographs are taken. Kindly remain seated until the Prime Minister government officials, stage party, students, and faculty exit. Then please join us for a reception in the foyer after the ceremony. Thank you.
Ooh.